Welcome to Crystal Waters International Ministries, where we are impacting the world with Christ's love. Today, get set to hear the life-changing living Word of God. As Denise L. Adams teaches the living Word, your life will be impacted and transformed. And now, here's Pastor Denise. Praise God, everyone. I'm so glad to be here with you today. Uh, it's exciting to be a part of Crystal Waters Spiritual Institute. Uh, this is a class we're teaching on the office of a prophet. We've had one class prior to this, and it'll have a number of, um, there should be more than four classes in this one, just the way things are going. It looks that way. But we'll let the Holy Ghost flow and allow him to teach what he wants done today. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for everyone who hears this message today. We thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke and removes the burden. We thank you, Lord, that your word is effective, alive, and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder the uh, joints and marrow. Hallelujah. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Praise God. I thank you, Lord, for your word as it's going forth today. I pray that it changes lives and gives revelation knowledge to your people that uh, we can go and grow together in greater dimensions of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Well, we're talking today about the prophet. And uh, last week, well, we talked about, oh, different things, New Testament prophets, Old Testament prophets, different things. But today we're going to be talking about the um the job description of a prophet an example of a prophet call so they all have different examples that come up but one thing i know about a prophet they have uncommon wisdom that wisdom comes from above amen that's godly wisdom and uh, uh proverbs uh chapter 1 verses 5 and 6 says the wise also will hear and increase in learning and the person of understanding will acquire skill and attain to sound counsel so that he may be able to steer his course rightly. Now, a prophet is, you know, when the prophet is called, they're not necessarily trained yet, right? There's training that goes on. It's like a, a singer may be called to sing, but there's training that can go on so that their voice is even more beautiful and more effective and more effectual. Well, just like a prophet or apostle, uh, evangelist, pastor, teacher, there's the calling, there's the separation, and then there's the release of that um, uh, fivefold minister to do the work of the ministry. And many people short circuit the uh, the preparation part, that separation time that between uh, them and God and and the teaching that they glean from their mentors and uh, their teachers. You know, every person in the fivefold needs to have a mentor, a spiritual leader over them. Why? Because, you know, it uh, keeps you on track. You don't get in the gutters. And they see your blind spots. They'll help you. They'll show you, okay, this is an area you need to work in. Yeah, and you need a really a face-to-face -face relationship with your pastor or uh, your prophet their spiritual uh, parent in the ministry, because if you don't have a, you know, that face-to-face -face relationship, a, a two-way relationship, not just one way, both ways, talking back and forth. And if as a, a mentee, you're not open to, to hear correction, change, rebuke, even, um, you know, you're setting yourself up for a, not a great life because, you know, God rebukes those whom he loves. He chastises them. He corrects them. And he, does, and he doesn't do it to hurt them. He does it to help them. Amen. I likened it to the story of the, the mom who said to the, the child, um, stay away from the stove. It's hot. Don't touch the top of the stove. Don't touch the elements. They're hot. And, and she doesn't do that to stop the child from um, uh, learning to cook or, or learning how to... Um, create things on the stove or even to be afraid of the stove. But she does that because there's training involved in using a stove. And just as every office, you need training. Uh, those of you who don't think you need training, hallelujah. I pray God will help you to understand that we all need training. There's not one of us who's got it. And yes, the Holy Ghost will speak to you, but he will also use men and women of God. And usually he will set up someone uh, for you, who is your spiritual parent to help you. Now, you may not like that spiritual parent all that time. You know, there'll be times when you may, um, you know, 
didn't like that word they gave or, you know, um, had a challenge. But you know what? That's that's called life. And the part we have to learn is to grow past those things that you will have challenges. And that doesn't mean that that person is no longer your spiritual parent. What that means is you need to communicate. You need to talk. You need to deal with things. Amen. Hallelujah. And uh, by so doing, everybody's growing. Everybody's learning. Everyone is being perfected. No one's above correction. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know who that one's for, but that's not in my notes today. But I'm just so glad to be able to say that, you know, I have have um, a spiritual father in my life who is who is who has corrected me, who is who's encouraged me, you know, um, just uh, just the other day, well, a while back, you know, he says, Denise, you have a voice and you need to use that voice. And it really encouraged me. You know, it was it was a word from my prophet for me. And I know that you'll have a prophet for you who will speak to you and encourage you. And it will actually lift you and take you into your next se- next season. It actually has a power within itself to lift you and catapult you into your next season. That's powerful. You need that. Amen. We can't do this alone and God will use people to help you. Amen. You may have your own ministry. You may have your own division. You may have your own chat. You know, you may, um, there's times and seasons after the calling, the separation, then there's the release. And when that happens, you know, you'll be not talking maybe as often as you did with your spiritual parent because you're grown up. It's for instance, I've got grown up kids and I don't need to tell them how to tie their shoes. My goodness, they're in their thirties. They know how to tie their shoes. So they don't need my help in a lot of areas. They got it. And that's what happens as we grow in ministry. There's a lot of things you will have got. But you know what? Um, I always like to leave my spirit open to hear uh, from my um, from my mentor, from my spiritual parents, those who I've entrusted, that God has entrusted to help me to be the best me possible so I can be a great leader for other people because it's all about serving, right? This is all about serving. It's not about a the position and an appointment. It's about a servanthood and a heartbeat to help God's people, a heartbeat to love God with everything we are, but a heartbeat also to love people and to do what he has for us to do. Amen. Okay, so a prophet is wise and a wise prophet has a mentor, glory to God, and um, more than a mentor, but a spiritual parent who you know, they tuck you under their wing and they care about you. Your life matters to them. And we're going to get to that in a minute. So Proverbs 1, 5 and 6, it says, The wise will hear and increase in learning. And the person of understanding will acquire skill and attain to sound counsel so that he may be able to steer his course rightly. It's a powerful word. And I hope you receive that word. Well, let's look at the job description of a prophet, Uh, an example of a prophet who is called. In Jeremiah 1 verses um, 1 to 12 in the New King James Version, I'm going to read this to you and we're going to take a look at this and we'll see where God goes. Praise the Lord. He says, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, and this is Jeremiah saying, Ah, Lord God, behold, I can't speak for I'm, I'm a youth. But the Lord said to me, don't say I'm a, I'm a youth for you shall go to all to whom I send you. You know, Jeremiah was really young, young at this time. And, um, he, he was, you know, we all have an excuse. It was a, I can't do that. I'm, 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 well, for me, you know, I'm, I'm a grandma, you know, or I live in the, the North. The, who's going to hear me? There's all these excuses. The devil will give you a thousand and one excuses why God can't use you, but God will use you and he wants to use you. Glory to God. We're talking about the office of a prophet. Let's go back to verse seven. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth. In other words, don't give me your excuses. No more excuses. For you shall go to all to whom I sent you. Now that's a command from God. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. 
Don't be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Verse 9 says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Now, I want you to catch this. Now, God was ordaining Jeremiah, and he's telling him his his job description. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. He says, look at this, Jeremiah. I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have... I have set this day over you, the nations and over the kingdoms. Now, prophet will, it will be over nations and over kingdoms. Wow. What is the job description? Here we go. Are you listening? Say amen. To root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a, branch of an almond tree. And the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Well, let's go back to verse chapter, uh, uh, no, verse here, verse 10. And uh, well, let's go back to verse nine. We need to take a look at how the Lord put forth his hand. His hand is his hand of power. When God puts his hand upon you, the power of God is upon you. And he touched his mouth so this young man would speak God's word. God will touch your mouth. He will open your your mouth and give you words to say. And the Lord said to me, behold, I put my words in your mouth. He will actually deposit words, his words in your mouth. You know, sometimes you'll be speaking and go, where did that come from? And um, and, uh, it's God putting his words in your mouth. Sometimes I've had people... And I'll say something and uh, uh, they kind of their head does a double take switch. You know, they go, how did you know that? Or, you know, they get that question mark on their face and they look at you as if, how did you know that? And I go, I, you know, I just said it, right? I'll say something. It'll trigger the power of God and it'll, it'll, it'll affect their life. Hallelujah. But that's good because God wants to help them and I want to help them. So yeah, use us, Lord, use our mouth. Everyone put your hand on your mouth. Now I'm going to put mine beside my mouth because if I put it on my mouth, you're not going to hear me and y'all can laugh now. It's okay to laugh when we're, when we're being taught. So here we go. Lord, use our mouths. Lord, we yield ourselves to you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We ask you, Lord, to put your words in our mouth. Put your words in our mouth, Lord God, that we could help your people, that we could be a blessing to your people, that we could change lives, oh God, that we could be a help in a hurting time, that we could be a lifter, an encourager, a lover of your people, Lord. Use our mouth for your kingdom, for your glory, for your honor and your praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's look at this to root out. Now, some things are hidden and uh, you need some, uh, God will use you to root out things. I mean, sort of like, you know, you ever rooted something out of the bottom of a drawer? You know, okay, a lot of us women have done that. Maybe you guys in your in your in your garage looking for some tools, and you're looking for that one thing that need you need to find. You have to kind of go dig through and root it out, find it, look for it. Well, God's going to use you to do that same thing in people's lives. There's some things in people's lives that need to be rooted out. And there's two ways to apply that word rooted out. Rooted out could mean to take it out of someone's life, or it could be you're rooting it out to find it, to bring it up and say, this is what you've been called to do, or this is what this shining thing that I see in you. And this, you know, there's two ways to look at rooting, right? Rooting is finding it. Amen. And, and you pull it out. So you're going to the deep things of God. You pull out things in people's lives to help them. Glory to God. And God's going to show you. He's going to show you what it is. There'll be the ding, ding in your heart and in your spirit that says, hey, this is this is what we have to deal with. This is what we're, we're going to be talking about. This is what God has deposited in you. And you didn't even know it sometimes. It's just amazing how God does that. He has got hidden treasures in you. There are hidden treasures deep with inside of you. There are so many awesome treasures that God says, oh, yeah, I hidden that. And that's only, that's for 2014. And this one, that one's, oh, that is for 2017 on um August the 3rd, you know, whatever. God, God's got things hidden for a season. He says all eternity 
and that's in Ecclesiastes. All eternity is set in in, in our hearts. All of eternity, everything that we are called to do and to be has been set in our hearts. I think that's Ecclesiastes 3, 10 or 11, thereabouts. That's, and not on my notes. Uh, but he set eternity in our hearts and God will use a prophet to pull those things out and to reveal them to you. Isn't that awesome? How God uses us. You know, he doesn't use us alone. We can't do this alone. And I guess that's a big message for all of us because many times prophets... Hello, prophets uh, tend to be, uh, well, some say hiding in a cave, but, uh, you know, we like to be alone with God. We like to, to be alone with God, hiding in God, talking to God, dealing with God, communing with God, hearing from God, seeing from God, touching God, hallelujah, being with Abba Father. You know, he's more than God, he's Abba Father. He's our very breath in our life, and and that's our most favorite place to be is 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 there with Daddy, is there in the presence of Almighty God, uh, in communion and in fellowship with Him. Hallelujah! And uh, so we need to know that there's yes. So we know we hear from God, but then someone will come along and give you a word, and you'll look at them and you'll go, okay. I just learned something. I just heard something. And God will use other people because you're not an island to yourself. And God wants you to make sure to keep us humble. Hallelujah. To keep us thinking that, you know, it's not just us. It's the world of the, because oh, that can happen to them. I see many prophets go off that way. And, and you, you need to, to kind of get that balance in there because, you know, God will use a donkey. He will use a rock to talk to you. He will use an animal to talk to you. And he will even use your grandchildren, which has happened many times. Um, that has blessed my socks off. My children and my grandchildren have been used by God to uh, bless me, uh, to uh, make me think more, and to change my life. I like that. God will use everyone and anyone, everything and anything to uh, use it. So, you know, uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's chosen us to help his people, and uh, we're going to do that. So we're, there's a rooting out process that uh, the prophet goes through and a pulling down. Now, there's some things that need to be pulled down. Amen? There's uh, things that are, are uh, vain imaginations. There can be walls that the enemy has placed up. There can be uh, spiritual wickedness in high places or rulers of the darkness of this world or uh, powers or principalities that need to be pulled down that sometimes those things need to be rooted out too absolutely but there's also this pulling down of these things right and uh um the pulling down is interesting actually just the other day i had something like that happen in a dream slash vision slash okay it kind of happened in the spirit and I'm, and i'm talking to you from my experience because when i talk to you from what i know and what i have seen it's more of a blessing yes we're going to go to the word and it's going to explain it but when I tell you about some of some of the experiences I've had, I hope it helps you to understand the anointing on your life and or the anointing on a prophet's life so that you can understand how they operate. Because once you understand how they operate, it makes sense. You know, I've seen these uh, personality trees where there's a sanguine and a, a lion and a beaver, whatever. They're different types of personalities and people think differently. Well, once you understand that um, uh, how uh, uh, one personality type works, then you can, you, you can communicate better. You can be more factual. Um, life is more pleasant when you understand how they think. And, uh, like men think differently than women. I mean, you know, as a woman, I, I have one way uh, or a way of thinking that is, is female and uh, men have a way of thinking that is male it's just the way it is and once you can understand how they think and how they operate then you go oh oh I see how you're working I understand you before I thought you were just being strange but now I understand hallelujah you think that way and uh, what that does is it helps us to be better people amen so praise God, I'm sending, okay, so we're, where are we here? We're in, um, we're pulling down. So anyway, I had this vision, dream slash was there in the spirit. Cause I, you, cause sometimes you can feel it actually happening. It isn't just a, it isn't a dream. 
And it's not just a vision of something. It's not just a picture you're seeing. You're actually doing it. And so I was in this vision and I had been, uh, this one couple had been on my heart for a long time and uh, they were going to a certain nation. And, um, and I had been praying. I didn't know they were going to the nation at the time. I, I just knew that they were dealing with some things with that nation. I had no idea they were going to that nation. Anyways, so I'm in this dream and a uh, thing that's happening, this spiritual thing that was happening. And uh, there's this h- huge... Uh, ancient type looking um, a spirit that was uh, sort of inclined to that specific nation. I'm not going to give specifics because it's, it, I just don't want to do that. And so anyways, but I picked this thing up. I mean, it was towering over me. It was like the Goliath and David thing, but it was the thing and Denise thing. And I'm, I'm looking at it and I picked it up and I threw it over my shoulder and landed it on its head. I pulled it down and landed it on its head. It pulled down the stronghold for this this couple. And I did this while I was sleeping. And I woke up to, you know, you wake up and you go, hey, that just happened. That just actually happened. And you open, you praise God and you thank God for the work. And you declare what you saw. You declare what you felt. Declared what happened. And just, you seal it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And it was so funny because um, about three weeks later, I uh, got a call from them and it was like, yeah, we're going to such and such. We're going to be doing some work in this country for uh, you know, a certain amount of time. And I went, oh, awesome, you know, and uh, that was really great because God used me to help them. And that's the job of a prophet. Prophet is for God to use the prophet to help people. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's a pulling down. And there's some things that need to be destroyed, too. And we're talking about spiritual things, right? We're not talking about natural things. We're talking about destroying spiritual things. Because things, natural things are influenced by spiritual things. Let me say that again. Natural things are influenced by spiritual things. So you have to go into the spirit. Because if you try to do it in the natural, it's not going to work. We have power in the spirit to deal with things. So we have to go into the spirit and destroy some things, destroy the plans of the enemy, destroy the the uh, evil communications of the enemy, destroy the um, the 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 speaking of evil words over people, destroy witchcraft, destroy the powers of darkness. Amen. We have to destroy their plans, their strategies, their snares, their traps, their lies. Sometimes you have to destroy the lies that they are placed upon people. The enemy has put lies upon people. And sometimes in prayer, you just need to destroy them. You know, most of what a prophet does, he does an intercession. We're going to get to that in a minute. Most of these things are done prior to the meeting, prior to the event in prayer and in intercession for God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's a destroying and there's a throwing down. Amen. So I guess that was more of a a throwing down of this principality that I I had done in the dream. But it felt like I pulled it down and I threw it down and it was down and it was down and out. And that was a good thing. Amen. And it opened doors for them to a nation to do the work that they're called to do. And I'm excited about that. So there's a rooting out. Everyone say rooting out. There's a pulling down. There's a destroying and there's a throwing down of things. Sometimes you have to tear things down before you can build them up. You got to, you ever been in a room and had to clean a closet or to do a, a clean a house? Some things you have to tear down, you know, to make the house beautiful again. You got to tear some things down. You got to pull things down. You got to throw some things out. You got to destroy some stuff. You got to root out some things. And then what do you do? You build and you plant. And building is planting is so much fun. We love to build and plant because building is you build with God's word. You build people up with his word. You build them up on the inside and you plant the seeds of life in them. You plant the destiny. You pull those things out. You root out that destiny that's in them and you plant it in the earth realm. You, You pull it forth, amen, from the deep things of God and you release it. And that's how you plant and you build and you uplift God's people. You use his word. Amen. 
hallelujah, you know, you might have something to say like, oh, you know, in the past you've gone through some some struggles, but God has delivered you from those struggles today and he has set you free and now you're going to go forth and I see you in business and, uh, you know, whatever God shows you and and doing great work, um, you know, and he'll give you, he'll direct you, he'll lead you and you have to have faith to prophesy, right? You have faith to declare God's word. You have to have faith, amen, to, to release a word and remember Faith works by love. So let the love of God constrain you and guide you. Amen. It's the love of God within us that moves us in the direction we need to go. Hallelujah. You know, as a prophet, every detail of the people's life, it concerns you. You know, the love of God just concern, it is just so deep within you that you care about these people's lives. You care about their breakthroughs. Amen. Everything to do with their life matters to the prophet. Amen. You know, a, a prophet, a good prophet will have a pastor's heart. A pastor's heart is so compassionate, so loving, so nurturing. And a prophet needs that type. I, I heard a man of God say once, a prophet has two natures. He has a lion and he has the lamb. And you can't. You have to be a lion with the devil. You have to roar. Amen. But you have to be a lamb with the people. And uh, so there's two sides to a prophet. So you might think that some prophets are a side of like, whoo, little, little out there. But no, they've got two sides. They have the, the lion in them and they have the lamb in them. And uh, it's important to know that fact. It, it'll help you. It'll help you when you see a, um, a prophet roar or, or sometimes when a prophet speaks, they'll say no. And, uh, you know, th- you think to yourself, OK, did the ground just shake? They said no. And it felt like the whole place shook because of the their words have so much power in the spirit they just cut through everything or they'll say yes you know and it'll be the same thing it'll be like the shaking going on of things that have shifted and changed right and uh, so it's pretty amazing that they have this 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 thundering roar within them and yet they have the meekness and the gentleness of a lamb and to know that um uh, that we're to uh, to be kindly and loving and gentle to people and oftentimes that balance is is sometimes hard for the prophet you know you, you got to be the lion you got to be the lamb and uh, bless the lord amen he's given us the ability to do it we just need to tap in at the right time and be alert and aware when we're dealing with people that are you are you acting as a lion in the wrong situation and you need to be a lamb here amen because your words have as as much effect as much effect as a lamb as a lion sometimes they think just as a lion you'll have an effect no the lamb can go places the lion can't go a lamb can go through a door that is so small and tiny where a lion cannot go you just can't do it amen but a lion can go places that a lamb can't go Amen. So you need to be the lion and the lamb. Praise God. Well, let's talk about the office of a prophet and the prophet. And they carry the people in their heart. They actually carry people in their heart. It's an amazing thing when you're a pastor or a leader and uh, the love of God is constraining you and guiding you. and God is speaking to you. All of a sudden, you'll just like, um, you'll need to be alone. There have been times where I felt like I've got to get alone with God now. I mean, I've heard Kenneth Hagin say, he says, I felt, I felt led. I had to go pray right away. And he was at a dinner party at somebody's house and he excused himself. And they were smart enough people to understand when the prophet was being moved by God. Someone's life was in jeopardy. And that often happens. And the prophet needed to go pray. Amen. Whether you're a man or a woman, I pray that you hear God's voice and are obedient to do what you need to do. Sometimes you have to separate yourself and pray. Amen. Now let's not all go weird, right? Because some people have taken it to an extreme and they're, you know, they're seeing everything as spiritual. They see, you know, uh, uh, a penny on the ground and that becomes a spiritual thing. And it's like, no, that's a penny on the ground. Sometimes a penny on the ground is a penny on the ground. Um, sometimes a, a dollar bill on the ground is a dollar bill on the ground. Let's use that term because this is going to different nations. And sometimes it's a prophetic sign. Not everything is a prophetic sign. And, and young ones in, in the prophetic often trying to feel deep and strong and powerful in the prophetic anointing get kind of 
super hyper spiritual and guess what I was like that at times too before but then you kind of grow up a bit and you realize okay you know sometimes an apple is an apple and it's all good amen I'm being real with you and I want to be vulnerable with you I want to share my life with you because if I can do that amen I'm helping I'm helping you I feel like I'm helping you I'm being real with you because you're gonna have struggles in your life in ministry you're gonna have struggles with the word you're gonna have struggles with uh, uh, of operating in the office of of being the lion and the lamb of expressing yourself accurately and uh, you know uh, it's important to not be concerned about being a perfectionist but working towards excellence in all that you do amen so we go from glory to glory and grace by grace right so don't beat yourself up if you missed it if you have to correct uh, go apologize to someone do that you know the grace of God is there yes we are the righteousness of God but when you mess up it's okay to say to someone I'm sorry hallelujah okay we're talking about carrying the grace of a prophet amen they carry the people in their heart the prophet will actually feel the joys of people their sorrows and their griefs and get called off to pray somewhere often for people it's like oh, I got to go pray for this one or, oh I've got to phone her or blah 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 and oftentimes uh, the, you'll get oh I was just thinking of you oh I'm so glad you called I was going to call you or I, I you know you'll, you'll get these messages from people and it's God connecting us right it's God connecting us so it's not a superficial love for God's people you know it's it's not superficial it's deep it's heartfelt you know a prophet will carry their life is to serve God and to serve people it's not a flippant thing that they can do this and do that it's like they are called to do this this is their life's work this is why they were born this is why they were placed in the earth this is why they're doing what they're doing is because of of God's love because God has called them this is their assignment this is their assignment and they have to do it and um, so uh, know that that you know these these people this is there's a deep calling it's a heartfelt desire to help God's people to release his word amen God has placed words in our mouths to help us and this love will bring change and encouragement enlightenment it'll bring peace to God's people and yes even times there'll be words of correction of direction of even rebuke Wow, can I say that word? Because most people were going, oh, you can't rebuke people. Well, usually if you get got direction, correction, or a rebuke, you're not doing it at a public meeting. You're doing it privately with gentleness, and you're coming as, as a lamb. Oh, by the way, all these lying people who have no relationship, that's another thing. You know, if you don't have a relationship with the people, if you, you know, why do you think people were, are going to hear you? You know, um, uh, you has, you're supposed to know those who minister among you. You're supposed to understand how they are. You have to understand their heartbeat and how they work. Amen. Many people have come in, and I'm the big, big old prophet here, and uh, their heartbeat needs to be softened and gentled. And um, because when you give a word of direction or correction or rebuke, and you are a prophet, your words are not normal words. They are supernatural words that impact the hearts and lives of people. And uh, uh, it's important to just be mindful of your words and your actions. You carry um, um, an anointing about you. Um, it, it it's it's like a private going into a tank and and uh, the sergeant master says okay I've given you this tank this is your tank go in there and get to work and, and so this private gets into this tank and he's looking at this tank and he has no clue what button he's supposed to push and how to push it and what to do right and many uh, people have are in these tanks they have this anointing on their lives and they're hitting buttons and moving levers and doing things um, and uh, there are hurting people they are hurting people oh my gosh the last thing that they wanted to do is the very thing they are doing and uh, it, we have to take a look at that and say okay I've been called here's my tank now someone Holy Spirit bring someone to show me how this thing works amen hallelujah 
and uh, it's, it's, it's good to know how this thing works. So you carry words. The prophet carries words. Hallelujah. Amen. Where, let's see, where are we here? Right, even words of correction. Okay, they are responsible for every person who comes into their meetings, for God has sent them. If you are in a meeting and you're a prophet and you've been called in to do the meeting, you've been called by God. God has set you in that place to deliver a word. And the people who come to that meeting are the people that God has sent to be ministered to. It's no accident that they showed up. It's no accident that they didn't that they didn't go to uh, bowling that night or whatever they were going to do. It wasn't an accident that they didn't stay home. They came because by the Spirit of God, they showed up at your meeting. And as the love of God constrains you, there'll be words for them for whatever they need. They, You know, sometimes people think, oh, it's always a correction. That Sometimes it's something creative and powerful and, and just like an acknowledgement of what they've done. You know, God wants to showcase them. And, uh, and not the prophet, but the people in the meeting. And just to say, you know, um, yes, you've done this and this. And God is well pleased uh, with your servants, service in, in the ministry. And he, he's taking you higher. Awesome things like that, you know. People need to hear, and when when um, when God is speaking, and the anointing is flowing, and uh, there are great deposits in people's lives, great deposits in people's lives. I remember one time my spiritual father, he said to me, Denise, I said in big old, big old deep voice, Denise, you've had many dreams, and you don't remember most of those dreams. But in those dreams, God is depositing things for your future. And I went, oh, oh, that makes sense. Because I'd remember a piece of it or just a nugget of it. Or like two years later, I'll go, oh, I remember that dream. This is that dream that I had two years ago that I didn't remember. And I didn't understand how it worked. It's, but God, that's how God works with me, uh, is that he'll deposit things in me while I sleep. And uh, and it's quite interesting um, uh, sleep time isn't sleep time usually for me. Sleep time is God time. There's a lot of, you know, I get to work at night and he's very, very gracious to me and he deposits things in my spirit. And, and uh, it's so funny. I've had a number of people, and you might have had this happen to you too. A number of people will come up to you and, um, these people will uh, say, um, do you have a place up in this city or that city? Have you been there? Do you work there? I went, no. And one guy said to me just just last night, he says, oh, must have been Jesus using you. And I went, well, probably, you know, he, he understood he was in the ministry. But it's so funny because God will do that often. He'll say, I saw you here and I saw you there and I know you from such and such. And I went, well, I've never been there. I haven't done that. But I know it's the spirit of God going before before me and using me and sometimes it's in dreams and sometimes it's in visions or and sometimes you know there's transportations and all these awesome things so you can expect the same thing too amen i'm telling you these things because if they happen to you now they're going to make sense now there's going to be an understanding with that amen hallelujah so you are responsible in that meeting for every person in that meeting amen i want you and, and if we think like that we're going to come prepared. We're going to come humbly. We're going to come gently. We're going to come with the fire of God. We're going to come as a lion and a lamb. We're going to come uh, to, we've come to make a difference. You, you walk into a room differently. You walk and talk differently. You present differently. You dress differently. You speak differently because you're called by God to do a great thing. Amen. And it's such a humbling thing, isn't it? It's like, it makes me cry sometimes when I think that God has qualified us and made us capable, able ministers of the gospel. That's in Timothy. It says that he has qualified us and made us that. Do we grow? Do we get better? Yes. So don't get mad at a young leader who's learning to learning to be a prophet or learning to be a pastor or hasn't arrived yet. I got news for you. None of us have arrived and that arrival will never ever be completely fulfilled. It just never ends as God is so much bigger than anything we could ever hope or, or imagine. He's just so much more and he has so much more to give us as we're 
open and ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I've got just a couple minutes left, and I want to talk about a couple of things. I want you to understand how a prophet works. They actually invoke the will of God. They invoke it. You know, when you invoke something, you bring it. You bring it into 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 being. It's just an amazing word. It's it's an, to appeal, to call upon, to raise, to summon to bring into play, to cite, to quote, to use. These are, um, you know, there's this summoning that happens when a prophet decrees and speaks a word. There's an actually invoking of the will and the power of God to bring about change in, in the lives of people, in a city, in a nation, glory to God, in the whole world. Hallelujah. Amen. And so when a prophet comes, they come in the presence of God and in the power of God. Well, I want to say, God bless you for listening. Thank you for listening to this video. I pray it blesses you. I pray it transforms your life, may impact you and follow you. May the words of God follow you all the days of your life. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For booking Rev. Adams' prayer requests or more information regarding our ministries, please visit our website at www.crystalwaters.ca. Message us at info at crystalwaters.ca by phone at 1-778-285-1111. Post Office Box 52562, Coquitlam Center, Coquitlam, B.C., V3B 7J4.